Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 12th of November 2018 and the time has just gone at 9.20 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly mixed start to this session here in Europe. Um, most European equity markets are, are, are lower. The FTSE 100 is slightly higher this morning though. The main news out of Europe this week uh, is going to be Italy. Um, the, the Italian government and Brussels are set at loggerheads over the Italian government's um, planned uh, increase of the budget deficit. Uh, so essentially, uh, the, the, the European Union rejected um, Italy's initial proposal to increase the budget, budget deficit. So the, the ball has been passed back to Rome, and they have until tomorrow to resubmit new budget to the European Union. And it sounds to me like the, uh, the, uh, the Italian government have no intention of actually changing or making any drastic changes to the proposals. So if, that's, if that, if that is, is the case, uh, if you have to Brussels, if they want to actually pursue uh, punishment for for the Italian government in the forms of financial fines, <clears throat> but given that it, Italy is such an has such a, such enormous government bond market, it's the th third largest government bond market in the world. Any kind of upheaval uh, of upheaval could push Italian government bond yields higher and in turn put pressure at the Italian banking system, and that could potentially trigger another round of the eurozone debt crisis. Uh, also, also going on. Is the news in the oil market? Uh, oil ha had a, a major, once again, a major sell-off at the back end of last week, um, as, as countries like the United States, Russia, and, and Saudi Arabia are trading either in terms of in terms of production or either at or near their all-time production. But over the weekend, uh, we heard that Saudi Arabia are looking to reduce their output for the month of December, and it's also talk that, that Saudi Arabia, in conjunction with Russia, are looking at actually curbing their their, their production in 2019. So we have seen a bounce back in the price of oil. The lower oil prices was also was also um, was also kind of feeding into the fact that the, the, the demand for oil is um, supply of oil is high. People are requesting is the demand for oil going to be low? If demand is low in the future, is that because global growth is slow? So that that's also been an issue. Um, overnight, equity markets in Asia uh, finished higher in session. There's no major news out of, out of Asia. Uh, the one kind of positive story was uh, Alibaba. Uh, the, the the retail company out of China, they had a record singles day. Uh, this year's single day completely smashed uh, last year's, which was which, which was a record last year. So it was it's, it's encouraging to see it, that there are a strong re retail environment still going on in China, despite the fact that the, that the economy is is cooling. Uh, Brexit is also going to be on the agenda here in, in the UK. Uh, Theresa May is in a very difficult decision, as as always seems to be the case recently. Joe Johnson has, has resigned from the government uh, as of, over the weekend. Um, Theresa May is, is in a tricky position because the hardline Brexiteers of the Tory party, they don't want to have it wind up in a scenario whereby the UK uh, is essentially stuck in the customs union for indefinitely until a, an agreement can be reached in relation to the, the back, uh, in relation to the Irish border. And the Democratic Unionist Party of Northern Ireland, who are probably of Theresa May at, at 10 Downing Street, they know what Northern Ireland treated differently from Great Britain post-Brexit. So it's a difficult balancing act for Mrs May, so it's going to be a tough time for her. It's likely going to be a tough time for the British pound this week as well. I'll take a look now at some of the major markets and, and uh, see how things are playing out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, starting off looking at the FTSE 100, uh, I'm looking at it on a weekly chart um, for, for, for a very good reason. I want to take a look at this red line here, the 200, day, 200 week, 200 week moving average. This red line here, uh, essentially the FTSE traded uh, basically tra tra traded below it um, in late October, we, but we, since then we have pushed higher. So while we hold above this red line here, the 200 week moving average at 69.64, we could see the market edge a bit higher. It, you know, it's that would be a break below that would be quite negative. So while we remain positive, things could look okay. Um, it is a bit concerning though that we haven't actually taken out the highs of late October. So we are below the highs of late October, but once we're above, while we, we remain above the 200 week moving average, we could see further ground to the upside being made. And if we do push on higher, we could be looking heading up towards 72.20. Uh, this region here, and if we go beyond 72.20. We could be looking at targeting this red line here, the 200-day moving average at 79.04, and a break back below, um, a break back below the, um, a break back below um, the 200-week moving average, uh, which would come into play at 69.64, could bring the February, could bring the, uh, the February low of, of uh, 68.38 into play, and a break below that. 
could take us back down towards 66.78. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. I'll flip over to the weekly chart because once again I want to have a look at the 200 week moving average. This red line here is the, the 200 week moving average on, on the German market, the DAX. Notice how we, we have traded above it, but we are trading pretty much back on it again. And we're pretty the 200 week moving average comes into play at 11,504. We're currently trading 11,448, so we're a bit below the 200 week moving average. While we remain below it, that is, that, that, that is a negative sign. And if you do, do look, if you do, if you do remain below it, I could take the push on lower from here. We could be looking at retesting uh, the October low of just north of 11,000, 11,050. And if you go below that, we then be printing new multi month lows. And we could be looking back down towards 11,000. Move to the upside uh, on the on the uh, on the German market. Um, Move to the upside. We could see resistance come into play at this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 11,848. And a move beyond that uh, could, could bring, say, 12,000 into play. And notice how this trend line here from the highs of June to, through the highs of July and also to the highs of September would come into play just beyond that, about 11,000, sorry, about 12,020. So there, there, there was keep an eye out for to the upside on the um, on the DAX. I'll take a look now at the Italian market because uh, Italy is going to be very much in focus this week. So the Italian market has been in a fairly obvious downward trend for a number of months. Uh, but we have managed to actually bounce back. But notice how the market appears to be turning over, over on itself yet again. Another, uh, if the market continues to turn over on itself, we could be looking at falling back to 19,000. And then below that, we could be looking at, at retesting the October low of 18,415. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at it back down towards 18,000. Move to the upside in the Italian market. If we do manage to actually take out uh, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, at just north of 20,000 to 20,066, we could be looking heading toward this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average at 20,737. Notice how it didn't actually get quite up to it, but it, it, it since it wasn't quite essentially resistant, but it wasn't too far away from it. So if the market shied away from it before the 100-day moving average, it could shy away from it again. Take a look now at the U.S. markets, which are in far better shape than their European counterparts. Starting off looking at the Dow Jones, if you draw a trend line between the lows of 2018, which is February February 2018, through Mar to the lows of March, April, and May, we get this trend line here. And notice how the market did trade below this trend line, but it did close above it. Uh, and the market has, since it closed above it, the market managed to actually going to make a very decent move to the upside. So while we hold above this trend line, um, it's likely we could see further gains being made on the Dow Jones. Notice how we're well above this red line here at the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 25,103. So we're in fairly decent shape on, on the Dow Jones. Now, granted, we have given back some of the gains, but we're, we're, not, we're not too far away from the 50 moving average, this blue line here at 25,883. And if you look to kind of push on higher, we could be looking at uh, uh, testing the recent highs from, from the back end of last week. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up toward this region here of around, around 25,000. Uh, 20, apologies, 26,500, And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the 27,000 27, mark. Uh, if you do have a break below this trend line here, which you come into play in around 24,450, there, thereabouts, that will be a fairly bearish sign that could point to further losses. And also take a look at the S&P 500. Similar situation. It's it's getting very uh, it's getting decent trend line support from a, from a trend line which goes much further back from the lows of February 2016 to the lows of November 2016. You draw this trend line along here. <coughs> Apologies. Notice how the market actually perfectly respected the uh, the the, uh, the trend line here. So we're well above the the, uh, the, the trend line support. Uh, on top of that, we are com fairly we're comfortably above. The 200-day moving average, this red line here, which comes into play at 2,762. And while we remain north of that, uh, it's likely we, we could see um, the, the S&P 500 push higher. If we do push on higher from here, we could be really looking at retesting the 100-day moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play 
at 2822 and if you go beyond that it could be looking heading up, heading up toward this area here these lows here uh, from September at um, 2872 and then if you go beyond that we'll be looking at retesting the uh, the all-time highs uh, once again it's only if you, if you drop back below the 20 moving average you could be looking at retesting 2700 and a break below 2700 might bring the the trend line support in, into play which should be in around 2620 and then of course if we, if we go below below that we'll be looking at uh, targeting 2600 and a break below that will then point to will, will be will be quite bearish indeed and point to further losses take a look now at what's going on in the gold market there's been a fairly strong inverse relationship between gold uh, and the us dollar recently and we've seen a bit of a up, move to the upside in, in the us dollar so it's no surprise you've seen a bit of a sell-off in gold in recent sessions you can see all, the, all these red candles here and even though it isn't a massive move, it, it is still significant though that, that gold uh, this morning traded back to a level not seen since uh, since mid October. So we're basically at a one month low for the price of gold, which isn't enormous, but gold has been very has been uh, experienced low volatility recently. So a one month low is more significant than it sounds. If you can look to continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting uh, 1200. A break below 1200 might bring uh, the September lows into play. 1180 and below 1180 we could be looking at back down towards 1160 uh move to the upside in gold um gains could be capped in around this area here at 1243 and if you go beyond that the next day to keep an eye for will be this region here at 1265. take a look now what's going on on the oil market as i said all was under enormous pressure uh for a couple of weeks but we have seen a bit of a bounce back today this is Quite a quite a, a sizable move in the uh, in the oil market. So I'm working at Brent crude oil, whereby it reached multi-year highs here in early October, and then it was and, and then quite a, a very uh, heavy round of losses uh, in, in in recent months in in recent weeks. Notice how the uh, um, the market is actually almost well respected this this uh, this this price here at basically sixty nine dollars a barrel, and it has managed to push on higher from here. If the wider downward trend continues uh, we could be looking at breaking back below breaking below 69 and bringing this area in, into uh, into play at 60 67 spot 50 uh, moves to the upside may run into resistance uh, at the 20 moving average this red line here at 74 spot 11 and then if you go beyond that 75 this region here 75 might act as resistance Take a look now at WTI, which is is in even worse shape than Brent, if you can believe it. <coughs> uh, so, so the WTI market has been has experienced a far larger sell-off, as you can see here, than the uh, than its Brent counterpart. Once again, we have seen a bit of a push higher here, though, um, as of this morning. But the tr but if the downward trend does continue, we could be looking heading back down towards the uh, the, the February eight. February 2018 low of uh, of uh, 5810. If, if the downward trend does continue, a bounce back may run into resistance in around this area here at 62 spot 50. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 65 dollars a barrel. And if you go beyond 65 dollars a barrel on WTI, the 200-day moving average, this red line here at 67 spot 53 may come into play. And notice how how far below WTI is below its moving hours that gives you an indication of how, of how bearish uh, sentiment currently is take a look now at the euro dollar so as of this morning the euro uh, broke through the august lows so back down to levels not seen since june 2017 so it gives, once again it gives you an indication of how bearish things are on, on the euro this is partially driven by the uncertainty surrounding italy uh, so as I said, we've, we've now created you know the lowest level in over a year, you know multi 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 month lows. If we did continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here at one spot eleven ten. Uh, any moves to the upside um, in euro dollar may run into resistance in around the kind of one thirteen mark. Um, one thirteen did act as decent support not too long ago so it may act as a resistance in the near term and if we do go beyond 113 we could be looking at heading up towards 115 115 10 this area here taking a look at pound dollar as i said the pounds under pressure on the back of a uh, continued uncertainty surrounding brexit so the wider term view has been between april and august 
pound dollar was in a fairly obvious downward trend. It staged a bit of a comeback um, in August, but once again, it would appear that we could be looking for the market could be turning over itself and falling into the, the, downward, the wider downward trend because notice how the highs in September, how the highs, we see a, a succession of lower highs here. Uh, we had a decent bounce back in September, uh, but then with the rally in, in October failed to take off the rally in September, and the rally in November failed to take off the, the rally in October. So a, ser a series of, of lower highs here. And we, so we, we could see a series of lower lows kick in. We could do. If the market continues to push on lower here, we could be looking at retesting the October lows. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at, re at retesting the August low, uh, which comes into play at one spot, 26.61. Moves to the upside, uh, may run into resistance from the in this, this area here, the, the, uh, the mid-October highs in around the 1 spot 32.50 area. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up toward this area here, uh, the early July high, 1 spot 33.61. I take a quick look at the week ahead. If you go to our website, uh, cmcmarkets.com, and under news and analysis, you will find the week ahead, video, uh, week ahead both video and uh, written article. Uh, so... On Tuesday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, we have UK CPI unemployment and wages. On Tuesday, tomorrow, we have first half figures from Vodafone. On Tuesday, we have third quarter figures from Home Depot in the US. On Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we have a number of, Brit of real estate investment trust companies from the UK reporting Land Securities, British Land, and Works and Work Workspace, all their first half figures. On Wednesday, we have a number of economic indicators from China, fixed asset investment, uh, retail sales, and industrial production. Wednesday and Thursday, we have U yeah, U.S. inflation and U.S. retail sales. And Wednesday and Friday, uh, we have Eurozone GDP and Eurozone CPI. It's also worth um, noting, if you go to our, our, our website, uh, cbsmarkets.com, and under the Learn section, and then go to Webinars and Events, um, tonight, um, on Monday the, the 12th of November, uh, at 7 p.m. UK time, 1900 GMT, we have a webinar you can attend, uh, Twitter, Deve Twitter Development Program Part 2, uh, it, it, is, it is free to sign up, so this is where you can sign up for that webinar. Uh, it's also want to point out a few things on our, on our trading platform. Under um, this is here is a section called Insights. Some of the articles that we do get posted to our news site of the actual website. Some of the updates that we do and the market analyst team get posted to Insight. Uh, Insight can be found under Market Pulse, second option down, uh, breaking news throughout the day, and. and and economic uh, uh, economic announcements, and also some of the updates that we do get pulled the insights. Also, want to talk about chart form, which is here. Uh, chart form is essentially take a screenshot of a chart and write write, write a as some short commentary on the price action. Anybody can add to this, not just market analysts, clients can add to this as well. So feel free to interact and use chart form. Chart form can be found once again under market pulse and as the third option down. And if you have any comments on this video or any of the videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.